Thank you. Senator Capito, and I guess you get to close it out when I'm gone. It's just you and me. Um, uh, thank you, Secretary Mayorkas, and uh, it's good to be back on Homeland Se Security Subcommittee where I was the ranking member with Chairman Murphy, and uh, even though ranking member Britt isn't here, I know she will be great uh, and working with as well with uh, the chairman as I was, so uh, I'm happy about that. Um, to be honest with you, just uh, briefly, I know you've had a, a long couple of days. Um, I was just in Mexico with the group that went to Mexico about 10 days ago. Uh, you and I have talked through these years as I was ranking member and, and chair on this subcommittee. Uh, the situation uh, honestly hasn't improved, I don't think at all, in, in our southern border, their northern border. They're pretty much overwhelmed in, so, in a lot of cases. But I do believe the partnerships that we have with that country are extremely important if we're ever going to solve this migration issue. Um, but I wanted to turn to the drug issue because this is really impacting, as you know, the state of West Virginia, but all, also our country. I guess just recently, I mean, I know we've given a lot of money for non-intrusive inspection, but we're still uh, inspecting the trucks at the southern border is still very low. I don't know, 10 percent? Do you know the percentage? Oh, no, a, a, a much greater per, uh, percentage. 20? I, be I believe we are inspecting 70 percent in some of the ports of entry. Really? I, really? I, be I believe so, but, Senator, I don't want to miss Okay, okay, so, yeah. So I'll Maybe somebody back. can clarify that while we're, while we're chatting. Uh, but in any way, the, it's still getting through. It's still getting through, as you know. Yes. Um, is there some new uh, fentanyl scanning technology that you just recently have deployed that you're aware of? Um, we, um, uh, we've increased the deployment of non-intrusive inspection technology. We are looking at how we can harness artificial intelligence to facilitate the detection of anomalies, including... Um, uh, you know, the hiding of fentanyl in compartments uh, in trucks and in passenger vehicles. Uh, so that's something we're very focused on. One of the new uh, unfortunate uh, drugs that is now um, peaking in certain parts of the country is this xylazine. Are you aware of that? So um, uh, I am. Uh, xylazine is actually a, a, um, a substance that is sometimes used with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. It's used uh, in agriculture mostly. Yes, yeah. but it, it, you know, it's a, a illicit product that is used for an illicit uh, purpose, and it is, of course, uh, a very, very dangerous. Is it detectable? The, if it comes through, can you detect it? So, so one of the things that I, I saw in Arizona when I visited uh, was uh, our forward operating labs, which is um, we, we dedicate uh, chemists, individuals with expertise, and the requisite uh, equipment to be stationed at the port of entry so that we can actually identify with specificity and certainty the precise chemicals uh, that are being trafficked so through the port identify. of entry so that we could actually refer for prosecution mm -hmm. immediately. Not only interdict and seize the chemicals, but refer the individuals for prosecution immediately. It's having a very significant uh, investigative and prosecutive uh, benefit to it. Well, I mean, the, the amount that is being seized uh, from year to year goes up. So that's good. We're seizing more. But it tells me there's more coming through than we, we know it's getting through. Uh, and uh, I, I partially attribute it to the fact that our Border Patrol and our agents and officers are so overwhelmed with trying to uh, figure out this human trafficking uh, that's coming through the southern border in the numbers that we've never seen before, that you only have so many, you only have so much. And uh, I'm afraid we're missing much, much more than we're actually seizing, which I believe that to be true. And, and I think it's because I think it's part of the issue is just this, the whole situation in, in the whole. Um, so I'll leave that, uh, my belief, uh, on, the, on the table there. Um, let me ask you another question. Uh, when I was working with Senator Murphy here on uh, more uh, closely on the committee, uh, always asking for new border agents, then it doesn't seem like they can ever hire up to the number that they've been appropriated for. I understand this budget asks for a few more, not a whole lot more. Um, are we at the levels of full employment with our agents? Uh, are we still having to do special incentives so that people can stay longer after retirement? or they get a bonus pay or, or something like that. I mean, I think it's reflective of the morale, which I understand is, is very low. So do you, what is the situation with the numbers 
and uh, and what would you know? Just because we would appropriate to more numbers, can we actually get there? So, Senator, you ask a very very important question. So, our fiscal year twenty four budget, the president's budget, uh, seeks um, uh, resources to hire three hundred fifty more border patrol agents. We've been appropriated for this fiscal year to hire three hundred more border patrol agents, the first time since 2011. Um, the question is very important because uh, it speaks to a recruiting and retain, a retainment a challenge across law enforcement throughout this right. country. And we are very, very focused on recruitment and retention as a campaign. Uh, we need the resources to hire the additional Border Patrol agents because we are doing everything we can to fill those slots. They are so critically needed for the reasons you have identified. So can you give me the numbers as to how many there are right mm -hmm. now and how many, if you add the 300, what's the, what's the max level and where are we now? I, cer I certainly can provide you with that, uh, with that data. I will do well, that. Well, what I'm trying to get at is you can hire 300 new. Are you down 500 or 1,000? We are down some. Yeah. We have some vacancies. Uh, we have some vacancies. We're working very uh, diligently to fill those vacancies. And we are, of course, obviously recruiting uh, uh, to fill the additional slots that we have. Well, I think what part of the yeah, part of the issues have been that the, we've been asking we've been asking these agents to do so many different things that they really are not in their core missions. And and so because of the so many people and 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 we saw that when we went down that you and I traveled together uh, and, you know, partially there's some National Guard people that come down, some NGOs that help, but essentially our border agents are, are, are asked to do so much in very, very difficult situations. So I, for one, and I know you do too, very much appreciate the work that they're doing. I hope you can get to the levels of which you're appropriated, um, but I, I just feel like it's law enforcement has an issue overall, absolutely, no doubt about it, but I think you have particular challenges within your department on this. So thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Senator. Mm -hmm.